Hello and welcome to Paper Crafting with Rebecca and, as you may have guessed, my name is Rebecca. You have hopped into Kinder's Card Challenge 12 December Giveaway Hop and I hope you find lots of inspiration and tips in this video and the other hop videos created by the video design team and guest designers. Tip 1. Before I ever create my cards, I assemble all my pieces to make sure I have everything that I might need. I do this by putting all the pieces into one little plastic bag as I cut and gather them. Then it is as easy as putting together a card kit when I sit down to assemble the card. How Kinder's card challenges work, in case you're new to her challenges, is that Kinder provides you with free cutting templates and free card sketches to take six pieces of your 6x6 six six pattern paper, along with your own card bases, adhesives, and other bling, and create 15 cards. You then will want to take a photo of all 15 cards in one picture and submit that photo to the appropriate album in her Facebook group to be entered in the prize drawing. I will put all the links you need to learn more, to find her Facebook group, etc. in my video description below. If you have any questions about joining Kinder's Card Challenges, feel free to leave me a comment on this video and I will be happy to help you out. However, for today's video, I am simply taking one of the sketches, in this case Sketch 8, and creating a card using the scrap paper and some chipboard ephemera that I had purchased in a garage sale. This is something I love about the sketches provided by Kendra for her challenges. Even though I make a complete set of 15 cards to enter the challenge each month for a chance to win prizes, I also create a lot of individual cards, such as this one, using up my scraps of paper in my stash. Kendra makes that so easy for us to do because her card sketches include all the measurements for each individual card, even if you don't want to use the cutting templates. So that is my tip too. Save those scrap papers, cut them into the sizes you need based on the card sketch, pop them into a bag, toss in some ephemera, then once you've gathered all the pieces you need, you can sit down and relax while putting together a fantastic card. I do hope you'll play along with Kinder's Card Challenge 12 for chances to win prizes. There are so many great prizes to win. You have until December 31st to create your set of 15 cards for this month's entry and upload your photo to the Kinder's Card Challenge Facebook group. Now that I've gone over Kinder's Card Challenge, let me talk a minute more about this actual hop, which is a different event than Kinder's Card Challenge. This is a giveaway hop, so you will want to hop along to see what each of our designers create using some of the sketches from Kinder's Card Challenge sketches. You could win a digital download in this hop, so make sure you watch, like, and comment on each video along the way. I will be sure to put a list of the hop videos and their links in my video description below. Be sure that when you finish the hop, you visit the link to the entry form in my video description and enter the giveaway by December 10th. The winner will be randomly chosen and announced on the Cards by Kinder YouTube channel under the Community tab. So as you see here, what I did was I simply took those pieces of paper that I had in my little bag marked sketch number 8, and I made sure I had all my pieces, and then I'm just doing some ink blending. I think that adds a little bit of richness to the paper and a little bit of variation. And I'm putting that all together. And of course, any time you use uh, an ink blending, you end up having a uh, mess to clean up, but that's okay. I love my glass mat, easy to use. I think I might have a link for that. I'll put that below if I do. And here I'm just going to use some uh, double-sided adhesive. I generally in my cards use a mix of double-sided adhesive and liquid adhesive. That'll be, say, tip number three. If you use all liquid adhesive when you build a card that has many layers, there is a chance that you'll get that rippling effect because of the moisture in liquid adhesive. So I kind of try to vary it. I'll try to have, you know, like in this case, I'm using some liquid adhesive for the piece that's going on the uh, paper that has the... Uh, double-sided adhesive on it. That way the double-sided adhesive doesn't have any moisture so it will tend to not warp and it'll help hold the piece that has the liquid adhesive a little bit flatter, keep you from getting some of those ripples and, and uh, warping that happens if you use a lot of, of liquid adhesives. Again, I just picked these papers and that little bit of a chipboard ephemera up in a garage sale. I think that's really great when I'm using Kinder's Car Challenges 
Um, like I said, if I have scrap paper, then I go ahead and just cut it out and I say, hey, this is the right size paper to use, such as for this sketch, and I drop it in that bag. And then once I have all my uh, pieces together, it's just so easy to sit down and make a card like this. And it's just really relaxing to me. I enjoy this a lot. I'm trying to build up my stash of the more masculine sorts of cards. So I was kind of glad I had these pieces of paper here and I'm working on that. I make all my own card bases. So what I will do with those is I, I guess this is what tip number four. Um, <laughs> I make a big stack of card bases, you know, just using um, the 110 pound card stock. And then what I'll do is I go ahead and make my mark on the bottom of them, you know, to, that's like my little signature mark that I make and my little stamp that shows my blog. And uh, that way I have a stack of those. So then when I'm putting my cards together, I can just drop one of those into the bag and some of the how I cut them is some of them I cut so that they're landscape and some of them I cut so that it's a top a flip open card and uh, where I put the uh, the fold at the top so I do a variety of them I'm just using my grid there on my glass mat to kind of try to get everything centered up the way I want making sure I like how that looks this little uh, piece of paper there um, as you may have noticed when I was getting things ready, I used a metallic marker to outline the edges of it. That just takes away that stark white and gives a little hint of a, of a I don't know, I don't want to say glitter, a glint there that just looks really cool on cards like this, really makes it stand out. As I was putting it down, I realized that it was a little longer than what I had intended for it to be, but no big deal. Just take a quick little snip of it there. I went ahead and uh, glued it down. And then I thought, well, I want that that uh, gold metallic marker on the end there where, since I had just made a raw edge. So I'm just going back and adding just a little tiny touch there to get that matching up so it matches the rest and wiping off any glue that I may have gotten on my marker. And then I'm going to add this. Now, this is a fairly flat card. I didn't use any foam tape on this card. Uh, I knew I was going to mail this card. I have somebody in mind that I'm mailing this to. And the mail just, I just want to be able to drop it in the regular mail. So I'm just putting this on there. Now the little fish that I'm putting on there, you can't really see he's a glittery fish. He's really pretty. Um, I'm going to just glue him down. He's chipboard, so that added some dimension there. Now, of course, the sketch had you cut another circle and put a sentiment on there if you want, or you could, didn't have to put a sentiment. You could just put whatever you want. But what I tend to do is sometimes, and like in this card, I'm not sure what I wanted to say as a sentiment yet. Things are... Um, we're not sure how things are going, so what I wanted to do was make the card. I'm going to leave a little bit of room in two different places on the card so that I can go back and add a sentiment if I want. You know, you might want to just add something like hang in there or best wishes or get well or whatever you want to do. But until you're sure what you want your sentiment, it's okay to make a card and just leave it without the sentiment and have it ready to go. And then go back. I mean, that's the fun of making your own card. You can always go back and add the appropriate personalized sentiment. And that's how I line it up to make sure that it's, I just get the one side stuck down, then I go back in and remove the uh, double-sided adhesive backing off of the other pieces of adhesive tape there. And then it just falls into place where it's supposed to. And I'm just making sure it's all adhered really well. I also uh, very much like adding a piece of the paper to bring the outside to the inside of the card. So again, when I have scrap papers that are small like that, that match the paper I'm using on the front, then I just drop them in that little baggie too so that I have them ready to go. And if I have to, I can always, you know, trim it on the end once I've glued it down. In this case, it was actually just the right size that I needed. So I just made sure that it was adhered really well. And now, like I said, I can either just use this as a note card and write a note, or I can go back in and stamp something on the inside if I want to do that. As far as my bling, I'm just using some little flat back rhinestones. In the picture she has, she shows you one there on that one circle, but it's okay to make the card your own. And of course, I had to add more bling. I couldn't just have one little one little spot there. And uh, so I'm kind of trying to find the right sizes, and I'm trying to remind myself. You know, at first I dropped those three 
three pieces up there. And I was like, no, 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 you're going to need place if you want to add a sentiment. So I've left that up there so I wouldn't be fighting the little rhinestones um, when I decide to add a sentiment if I cut one out and, and adhere it up there. So that is basically how I made this card. It is sketch number eight from Kinder's Card Challenge. I think it's so fun because even though I use the same sketches from you know for the three months of the card challenges over and over, none of the cards come out looking the same, whether they're Halloween cards or Christmas cards or get well cards. I mean, things just are um, so much fun using the sketches from Kinder's Car Challenge. And I, you know, I really do hope that you enter. It's a lot of fun. And uh, it's just, it's a nice community of, of ladies in that face, and men, nice of people, of persons <laughs> in that Facebook group. Um, real supportive, talking to each other, giving each other advice if they're stuck on a paper crafting project. It's just a really fun group. So there's my card for this hop. Please be sure to hop along with everybody and good luck and happy paper crafting.